In this tutorial, we're going to be using the Houdini Pyro tools to create this multicolored smoke, and then we're going to render it with Redshift. In Houdini, lay down a geometry node, and let's dive inside. Next, add a sphere, and we want this to be polygon. I'm going to set the scale to be 0.25 and the frequency to be 4. We don't need too much resolution here. Let's switch this grid off. Next, I'm going to add a transform node. And I'm going to transform this along X, 0.25. Next, let's add a color sop. And I'm going to choose a blue color. Something like this, that will do. Next, let's lay down a mountain. Make that active. Um, and the only thing I'm going to do here is just enable animate noise. Let's select all of those, move them over, hold Alt and drag across to create a copy. And on the transform, set the X to be minus. For color, let's choose something else, pinky red kind of thing, some magenta, there we go. And for the mountain, let's just offset that so the deformation varies between those two objects. Now we can select the two mountains, hold Alt and drag and it creates a merge. And we're going to drop after that point velocity node. Now the point velocity node is going to add velocity attribute and you can see it's going to compute from deformation. And if we look at the merge, you can see here we've got our color and our position attributes and now we also have our velocity and they're all vectors. And if we switch to the geometry spreadsheet, you can see the values for our position, color, velocity. You can see that they are vectors made up of three scalar values and we can pass those attributes onto our pyro and also use them in Redshift. If we scrub through, you can see that the deformation caused by the mountain is moving them around and that will create the velocity. Next thing we need to do is add in a pyro source and this is going to be how we source the attributes for our pyro simulation. So under initialize choose source smoke and it will create those attributes for us. It's created density and temperature. I'm going to choose surface scatter so we can adjust the particle separation and let's put that to 0.25 for now. You can see that we now have these particles across our surface. In the geometry spreadsheet, you can see we've got those additional attributes. We don't really need temperature, but we do want color. So I'm going to change that from temperature to color and also add one more attribute, which I'm going to set to be alpha. And over in the geometry spreadsheet, once again, you can see all of these. We've got density, P scale. We've got the alpha here and we've still got our other attributes, velocity, etc. And you can just middle mouse on here and you can see those attributes been added to the points. So we need to take those point attributes and uh, bring them into a volume. And you can do that using the um, volume rasterize attributes node. So we add that next. Let's make that active. We need to define the attributes that we're going to bring across. So first of all, let's put density in and accept that. We can see in the viewport immediately that a volume has been created. And if we middle mouse, you can see we've got this density volume or field. Um, it's basically storing that density attribute in those voxels. We also want to add CD, alpha, and a V for velocity. You can see that it looks pretty low res, but we have now got a separate field for those different attributes. So it basically creates a separate um, a volume for each one. Let's set the voxel size down to the same as our particle separation so we get a bit more detail. There we go. Now we have our volume with the attributes in place. We can add in a pyro solver and we can source those attributes. So wire up the pyro solver and make that active. First thing I'm going to do is just set the voxel size to be 0.25, but rather than have to try and keep those in sync, I'm just going to copy that parameter, come back to the volume rasterize, and let's just paste relative reference here. And we're going to come back to our pyro source and do the same for the particle separation. You might not always want those to be in sync, but for this tutorial, it's going to make things a bit easier. I'm going to set that bit lower as 0.01 so we have even more detail. Actually, I think 02 just to keep it a bit faster for this. We can always lower that later. So if we look, we have um, separate fields or volumes for all of those attributes. They're not the same as the attributes that we created here. Some of them are, some of them are different. So we need to make sure that we are sourcing the correct attributes. So under the sourcing tab, you can see that there are a few already in here, such as flame, we're not going to need, and temperature, we're not using. We do want to have density and velocity, and we also want to add in our color. And we can do that in one source by blending the, um, the CD attribute with the alpha attribute. So we just choose the source volume and the target field. 
and they have the same corresponding names. Okay, and now if we have a look, we've got color in the viewport, which is good. It means that the color is working. Let's come to our output. We only need to output certain attributes. So let's switch off or remove temperature and flame. Now, if we come to the pyro solver and have a look, you can see that we've got separate fields or volumes for our color, velocity, and density, although it has split those vectors into scalar fields. We also have this convert to VDB on the output. I'm just going to leave that disabled for now. We can talk about that later. Let's look at the shape here. I want to add in some disturbance. I'm going to leave that at the default settings, but you can see that the values are very similar to working with noise and also that it's working um, with the density field. Under fields, we've got dissipation. That's essentially how quickly the smoke dissipates or disappears. So I'm gonna make that half the value so that it's slower. Let's zoom out and have a look at the simulation that we've created. Let's play this through to um, cache some frames. Now, of course, we're not gonna to get too much detail because the voxel size is quite large, but it's perfect for this kind of preview and setup and we can always increase or sorry decrease the voxel size to increase the resolution later you can see we've got our blue and our pink smoke and they're mingling together it's all coming out of one pyro solver so now we can start setting this up to render i'm just going to put a null for the out let's come up and in the object context i'm going to add in an rs dome light first of all um, and let's also add in a camera I'm going to set the view to be 1920 by 1080. On the dome light, let's switch to the light tab. And you do need to make sure that you enable volume contribution on any light that you want to render volumes. Without that, um, the light won't affect them. I've added an HDR and set the intensity to five. Now we can set up our redshift volume material. Before that, I'm going to press Control one to set up a quick mark. Let's go to the material context and add in the RS material builder. Dive in there and let's delete this standard material and we're just going to add in an RS volume and wire that into the volume input of the Redshift material. So you can see it's already added the density channel for us. So if we set Quick Mark 2 here and press 1 to jump back, now we can come to our geometry and we can add that material. So I'm just going to add that Redshift material and open up my Redshift render view and hopefully we will see our volume rendering in that render view and there we go we've got a result i'm just going to resize this so it's a little bit smaller and restart that okay so let's come back to our quick mark 2 by pressing 2 let's change some values so i'm going to set the scatter coefficient to be 20 now that should scatter a lot more light within the volume let's try adding some color okay so that's still not working so we are getting a volume rendering but it doesn't seem to be using this material it's not making any changes and if we come to our out pyro let's have a look and you can see this is a bit of a gotcha that i've um, realized happens you get this shop material path which is an primitive attribute added um, and that's overriding the redshift material so what we need to do is just delete that attribute with an attribute delete so let's drop that in after our pyro solver and under the primitive attributes let's just add in that shop material path and as soon as i've done that you can see that it's now using that redshift material and we're getting that red tint so we can just revert that to default so it's white you can see the scatter coefficient is working it's very bright let's increase the absorption to 50 and you can see now we're getting a really dense volume we're not getting those colors though we're only seeing the kind of white or gray and you can see that we do have those attributes but they're separate scalar values and for that to work with a redshift volume it really needs to be a vector attribute or a vector volume and if we type CD in here, you can see that it doesn't work, even if we restart the render view. Let's just reduce this down so it's not quite so dense. Set them both to, say, 30. To solve this problem, we're going to need to merge our three CD attributes into one vector. The difficult thing here is that Houdini volumes don't support vector volumes. Each volume has to be a scalar, so we need to convert this. Um, and we're going to convert that not into polygons, um, although it does look quite cool. Um, into a VDB. So we've converted that to a VDB. If we refresh, we can see that we're getting the same result. And if we have a look, we've got the same attributes as separate fields. So we need to merge those together. And you can do that using a vector from Scalar. And basically, that solves our problem. And you can see that we're now getting our red and blue smoke. And if we come up, you can see that it's taking the name and using a wildcard. So not only has it worked on our CD, it's also worked on our velocity. So now we have these vector 
fields. You can actually do it a much easier way if we just bypass those and go straight into the null. Remember I showed you before on the output tab of the pyro solver, we've got this option to convert to VDB and that will do the same thing for you. And you can see we get the right result. And if we look at the attributes, once again, we've got a separate field, but they're now vector volumes. Um, but knowing about this VDB vector merge um, is still pretty handy. To render this out, it's definitely worth using the file cache node. Um, just make sure that when you set it up, you save it out as a VDB. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to convert and do all that again. On the Pyro Solver, I did lower the voxel size a little bit. Still not massively high amount of detail, but should look quite good. Once you've cached that, you can just choose load from disk. It should enable that automatically. And now you can jump through and have a look at your simulation um, and do some test renders nice and easily without having to worry about resimming it or anything like that. So I hope you enjoyed that and it's shown you a few little tricks to get your smoke rendering with Redshift from Houdini. Um, I was a bit puzzled by the uh, vector attributes, so I thought I'd share that with you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.